How's it going folks? Mr. Bass here and I'm excited because my six cents box showed up today. And some of you that may have seen some of my videos know that I've I've been uh, I've been doing a lot of these boxes. Um, and um, six cents has really turned out to be one of my favorite boxes. Um, not because it comes in a bag. I don't really care about the box or the bag, to tell you the truth. But because these boxes, like LTB and Mystery Tackle Box, they're okay. They, you know, they have some really nice lures, but I've been kind of disappointed that, you know, you'll buy, you'll pay anywhere from like 26, 26 up to about 40 bucks a month for these boxes. And when you start breaking them out and going through the baits, there's only about half of them that I really even care about. So I think what's different about the six cents box um, different from a lot of them is that uh, I know I'm getting all six cents baits and I really like that because I know I'm not going to be disappointed. I love their baits and um, I know I'm not going to be disappointed with them. So let's crack this thing open and see what's in here. Okay. Got a few plastic, a few uh, soft plastics, and a couple of other some jigs, and hooks. That's one thing too I've noticed is that um, you know, obviously these companies are trying to make money, and so you can't blame them for trying to make a profit. So they've got to find, you know, kind of a balance of can I get the best possible, give them the best possible product and still make money. And probably, and I'm just guessing, but probably they're, they fall short. So they have to do things like this. And even, you know, even Six Cents is doing it where they throw in a package of hooks. Now, hooks in and of themselves are um, not always cheap. I don't have any idea what uh, a pack of five of these jugular hybrid hooks cost at sixcents.com. Maybe I should look that up though. Let me grab my computer here. We'll just do that. We'll take a look and see what these bad boys, what these bad boys cost. Um, hooks, premium fishing hooks. Okay, the jugular hybrid hook, three dollars and ninety nine cents. Okay, so six cents is selling these for about four bucks so you got to think these things probably don't even cost them a buck so throwing in some hooks really helps them and you know if they end up being good hooks and hooks that uh, you're going to use then that's great another good strategy is throwing in say a worm hook and throwing in some worms and then you can say hey put those two together and you may really be happy with the outcome. And then maybe from now on, when you buy our Divine Shaky Worms, you'll also buy the Jugular Hybrid Hook. So one thing about uh, worm hooks, they call this a hybrid hook. So you could use this for a lot of different things. To me, when I look at this uh, offset worm hook, it's... You know, it's a Texas rig hook for the most part. You're going to, most of the time when I'm putting something on it, I'm going to be Texas rigging. Uh, it's not a bad, 
hook. I'm sure. Feels stout. Feels strong. It's uh, and for worms, this offset, which is this right here, this little jig, is nice to hold your worm in place. So, not bad. There's five of these hooks worth four dollars. <throat> Next thing we've got is the Divine Shaky Worm. And the Divine Shaky Worm is 6.3 inches long. And let me make sure, that, no, this is the seven inch, sorry. This is the seven inch, so this is the bigger one. They only have two sizes. And uh, they say this uniquely designed worm is one you will not find another like on the market designed to match perfectly with our divine shaky head. The profile is thicker than other worms in its class, appealing to larger fish. The combination of its unique profile and sharp ridges results in a worm loaded with action that fish will be capable to feel and see from long distances. Okay, so I've done a lot of shaky head fishing. And see, this is smart on their part. They give you the, I was saying, hey, the old uh, worm hook is a good combination, and it is. You could put the, you put these on the worm hook, no problem. But even on their site, they're saying, you ought, to, you ought to match it up with our shaky head. And if you do that, boy, it's gonna be great lights out. So that was smart, I would say, to send the shaky worm and the shaky head at the same time. So this is a, let's, before we get to the shaky head though, let's, let's open up these divine shaky worms. This color is watermelon red. That's a standard go-to color. Show you what it looks like there. Really, watermelon red is a good natural color that um, you can't go wrong with on any soft plastic bait. And you can see up close that this worm has a lot of ridges all the way along it. It's fatter up here and tapers in this tail spot. And then it has like a, a bulbous end on the tail that I'm guessing maybe it, it helps it float. You know, with the shaky head, it's a bottom, it's a bottom, you talk about, they talk about the um, different levels in the water column, top, middle, and bottom. It's a bottom bait. It's something that you drop all the way to the bottom and uh, you want it to stand up. If you can get the thing to stand up, that's the kind of action you're looking for. And as you can see, the shape of the shaky head has a flat bottom on their shaky head. And uh, that's to make it stand up. Screw this thing on there. We can rig one of these on and show you what it looks like. This is a big shaky head jig. I normally don't fish with shaky heads this large unless I'm down in Texas or maybe Florida. Um, that's a stout, stout hook. Um, but you have this little bad boy here and you just screw it on the screw lock keeper and you know, Different guys have different uh, preferences. There are some some things that guys really like about a screw lock keeper. One is it holds on good. I mean, look how hard, how well the hook is attached to that. So it's likely going to stay attached to your jig a lot longer. Um, but 
they're kind of a pain to deal with, although that screwed on very easy, and and uh, different people have different feelings about it. I personally don't use a lot of screw lock heads if I can get away from it. I, I, I prefer not to use a screw lock head, but I've used them. I've got, I've got quite a few different types. So really all you do, um, there's, there's a couple of different, uh, thoughts about the way you rig worms. But when it comes to a stand up worm, a shaky head worm, I don't, I don't text pose. Text pose is when you, I'll just do it on this one where you run the hook all the way through your bait like that. And then you kind of lift, lift your bait up and skin hook it in the top. That's what text posing means. And the thought behind that is you already get the hook penetrated all the way through the, through the lure, through the bait. And then when that, fish chomps down all it's got to do is push this little this little bit of plastic off and wham they're going to get hook the problem with this is it only works for a little while and there are applications where i use i text pose all the time but i don't for my shaky heads because uh this breaks through quickly and then this little this little piece of plastic that you've tech exposed, you can only do it a few times and then it's gonna wear down and it's just gonna come loose every time anyway. And then I've now got a piece of hook point floating down there and where I float, there's or where I fish, there's lots of uh, timber and branches and twigs and grass. And this will just get snagged and caught up in that stuff all the time. So, I mean, so you might say, well, why don't you find a place, you know, shouldn't be shaky heading around timber. Well, maybe, but uh, obviously if you have open water, that's that's the most ideal place to shaky head around rocks and stuff like that. But you can definitely shaky head in really any type of water, any type of condition. So all I do is I just, uh, I don't text pose my shaky heads. I'll show you. What I do is I just say, all right, I need, I want this to be as, as straight as possible. I figure out where the hook is going to need to be. And then I just Texas rig the hook in, but I keep it inside the plastic like that. It's not text pose. It's not sticking out at all, <clears throat> but I just find for my worms, a lot of my worms, and especially for my shaky heads, I prefer to rig it like this. And by rigging it like this, you're going to get, uh, to, in my opinion, the best, the best of both worlds. And now, as long as the tip of this is floating, um, Sticking up, that's that's going to be a nice presentation that that the fish are really going to be interested in. So you can tell, um, like they say on their website, their divine shaky worm fits perfectly, designed to match perfectly with our divine shaky head. And I'd say that's true. Okay, so. You got those cool shaky worms and the shaky heads. And I think I already said those are 3 8 shaky heads and they're green pumpkin. All right, let's continue on with the soft plastics. The next thing is their prawn. And this is called the prawn 4.2. And the four point, Prawn 4.2 flipping bait is designed to be your go-to soft bait around the thick stuff. Whether you're fishing shallow grass, shoreline brush, or deep hydrilla, 
The subtle action of this bait will trigger big bites from big fish. Okay, it's uh, called the prawn 4.2 because the bait is 4.2 inches long. And it comes in an eight pack. And this is green pumpkin, which green pumpkin is probably the most important color on the planet next to black and blue. So let's break open a prawn. I've never fished their prawns before. They all come in these, what do you call these, blister packs. So right away, I can see this kind of has more of a pointy, pointy tail. It's got ribs on it, similar to a sweet beaver, but I think these ribs are spread apart more than sweet beaver ribs. It's got these little tentacles or little protrusions, whatever you want to call them. And it's got two little, what are these, pinchers, claws, and then it's got this flapper. And you can, and so, like I say with all these baits, I mean, they, they make these things to be kind of uh, multi, multi-purpose. So, like this, um, it, it, it's a pretty streamlined bait that you could punch into thick cover. And you could make it even more streamlined by tearing this off and tearing this off, tearing these things off so that you just got a thin dart there. And then you keep this uh, tail in one, one solid piece. If you want more action, you pull the tail apart like that. And then when it goes through the water, you're going to get more kicking action and uh, a lot more water movement, water displacement. And uh, if you're looking for, you know, extreme uh, reaction strikes, that's what you'll want to do. But if you're having to really punch in tough cover to really tight cover, keep it together. Don't tear it and tear all these appendages off and you'll probably be pretty happy. This kind of reminds me of the Berkeley bait. I think it's an Iconelli bait. I think it's called a a diver or something like that. Um, let me look theirs up and see because it looks very similar to to this Ike I want to call it a spear or something, but it's not, it's not really called, um, <coughs> it's not really called a spear, devil spear. I think it's called a devil spear. Now that I think about it, let me type that in and see. Devil something. Devil... I wonder if they aren't making that. Here we go. Yeah, it's the Havoc. It's the Havoc version of Berkeley Bates called the Devil Spear. Now, the reason this looks... Uh, interesting to me let me go find their green pumpkin color real quick and then you can even see well they don't have green pumpkin on here yeah here it is green pumpkin they say this is green pumpkin this looks like a Okay, so, oh, rats, I messed up the, <coughs> there we go. So take a look at that. 
That is the Berkeley Havoc Devil Spear. And you can see this is kind of a similar, let me point this this way. Pretty similar shape, isn't it? Now the Devil Spear has no appendages at all, but looks very, very similar. I've not fished with the devil spear before. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's good or not. I, I, I don't know that they, that, that it might be discontinued because that was on Amazon. A lot of these Amazon baits are just sold by guys. You know, they're not just guys selling things. If you go to Tackle Warehouse, I, I don't see it on Tackle Warehouse which makes me think that either either it's not uh, doing very well or it's been discontinued. So the prawn looks like a pretty decent bait, really. I would have to say. This comes, like I said, in a pack of eight. Let me tell you how much it's worth. It goes for five bucks, four ninety nine. So can't go wrong with a flipping bait. Now the next one is the Divine Hybrid Jig, half ounce. And I don't know what a Divine Hybrid Jig is because the only jigs that I uh, have fished with made by six cents are their swim jigs and they're called divine swim jigs i believe so don't know what this hybrid jig is i gotta look it up here to see but this is it it's a half ounce it's got a lot of black and red in it and the cut they call this color delta craw Delta Craw. It's got an interesting looking head. It's kind of like a, looks kind of like a grass jig or a, a pitching flipping jig. Let's see what they say it is. The Sixth Sense Divine Hybrid Jig was designed to be a universal casting jig with a head shape that is a hybrid cross between a structure jig, grass jig, and football jig that provides the ability to use it in multiple locations throughout the day. The Divine Hybrid Jig functions as a multitasking bait for casting to shallow structure docks, rocks, brocks, brush, and grass for dragging out deep like a football jig. Comes with a premium weed guard and a 5 aught black nickel hook. So, there you have it. Guess I'll try that. Okay. We got three hard baits here, and they all look good. So, six cents uh, rattle trap is called the Quake, uh, and that's what this is. It's a rattle trap or a lipless crankbait. There's no lip, and this, uh, the Quake uh, baits come in one, two, three, four, four sizes. The Quake 70 and 80, so this is the small version. Then they have a Quake 80 that suspends, a Quake Thud 70 and 80, and a Snatch 70X. So this Quake 70 is the smallest bait in the line. It has, I'll let you hear what it sounds like. It has a, a little, little bit of, little bit of noise, but it's not a knocker. Those thud versions are, are knockers. It's five eighths ounce. It has number two hooks on it. 
and uh, it utilizes a dual flat back design. And these things are good. One thing I like about Six Sense is they put really good hooks on their on their baits, and I like that because you know there's a lot of crank baits out there that I like, but it kind of frustrates me that I'll pay a bunch of money for a new bait and then have to put new hooks on it because they they cheap out on the hooks. Well, you can see that. Uh, Six cents is not cheaping out on these hooks. These are these are very good hooks. This is a pretty nice color. This looks like some sort of a perch color. Gill, golden gill. So bluegill is what they're saying. This is a golden bluegill. And most bluegill baits are going to have orange on the chin, like that. It's got a purple back, which looks very nice. 3D eyes, they do really well on their attention to detail without question. So very, very nice. I'll rattle it one more time. Sounds like some BBs in there. And this thing uh, costs $8.99, so nine bucks. And they got a ton of colors. They've got, uh, Violet Panda, Bubble Gum Red, Rambo Chartreuse, Shad Burst, Chrome Black, Gold Reactor, Natural Crawfish, and that's only just a few of them. And they got 30 colors, it looks like. So Quake 70, I think that's a good one. I like that one. The next is, these are all crankbaits. That was a lipless. These. Next two are the Crush version. And the Crush is a unique, to me, I, I think it's it's unique. When they came out with it, well, I say, say unique, it's, let me start that over. The Crush is a very, very dependable, solid, crankbait and they make they make quite a few different crush models the one that they sent me here is the crush 100x and it's silent and i have i'm pretty sure i have a crush 100 or two but not a silent version and definitely not in this color and this to me is one of their best colors i really like this color it's called black magic i'll have to take it out and let you look look at it closer it's uh five eighths of an ounce dives two to five feet and let me see what they have to say about it i could tell you the six cents crush 100 square bill crank baits are designed to crash through thick cover yeah we know all that dives up to five feet, super sharp hooks, premium paint scheme, realistic 3D gill plates, 3D eyes, 3D scales, random reaction movement, faint rattle chamber, engineered buoyancy. That's for the, the not silent one. So take a look at the real deal. How about that? nice huh see those green eyes this is a, a great crankbait really can't go wrong with with the crush and hold the hooks and not a sound quiet as a mouse and there's definitely times normally when I'm square bill fishing I'm gonna I'm gonna go with 
a rattle first, a knocker or one that rattles away. But if you're not having much luck breaking out the silent and throwing it, oftentimes we'll get you bites. So it's good to have a few silent crankbaits in your quiver. Okay, the 100X it goes for $9 as well, $8.99. Bam. I like it. I'm trying to show you without the lights reflecting there. And the last one is the movement. And I got a movement bait last month. Um, the movement bait is similar to the curve in the in the shape. The, the the curve is curved and the movement is curved but the movement i think is kind of more of a long long uh kind of more of a broader sort of curve um, and i really like it i think it is unique compared to a lot of the competition out there um, I'm trying to find it on the website here so I could share with you what they have to say about it. Okay, this is the Movement L7. Here it is. So this is considered a shallow diving crankbait, zero to six feet at the most. Um, this color is Lava Truce. I like the Lava Truce color for sure. It's kind of dark, deep, red, or brown on the back. More of a fire red on the side, lava red. And then you got this yellow on the bottom. Nice bait. It's got a kind of a not too loud, but silent either. So it's a faint rattle in this thing. It has an S swimming random movement. Crankbait will randomly hunt left to right during the retrieve. And it's designed not just to crash and deflect over cover, but to back out quickly and reduce hangups. In other words, it floats. And this is one thing you gotta learn when you're fishing square bills. Square bills, in order to really be effective, a square bill's gotta be hitting stuff. You gotta be hitting the rocks, you gotta be hitting the tree limbs, you gotta be bouncing off of stuff. And of course, you do that enough, you are inevitably going to get snagged. And the great thing about a buoyant bait means it floats. Most times, especially if you're using like a moderate action rod, you can, when you hit into a cover, if you don't really set the hook in the cover and just kind of back off, it will often loosen itself up and, and float up away from the cover. And then you can keep fishing with it. Um, a lot of really popular square bills are made out of balsa because they have such great buoyancy action and they also have great, uh, great movement in the water and you want a lot of different movement in the water. So that's the Movement L7 and I think it looks very nice and they have, you know, about uh, 5, 10, 15, 21 different colors for the movement L. So that does it for this month's six cents fishing box bag. And I really, I, I have yet to find one of these six cents boxes I don't like. I think they're worth the money. You got the shaky jig. You got the all-around hybrid jig. You got the prawn, the flipping bait. You got the divine shaky head worm. Very nice. And 
the offset worm hook. That does it. Hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please like and subscribe and share. I greatly appreciate it. Have a great week and great fishing.